Happy Monday morning, you all. How are you doing? Again, happy Monday. This is your girl, Shan. I hope and pray that you all had an amazing weekend. You know, I always say that I hope that you had a restful, relaxing, peaceful weekend with a positive mood and a positive mindset. Okay, that's what we're working on. That's what we're practicing. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and give you the good old church announcements. First up, our show on tonight. Excuse me. <coughs> I'm out here in this heat. Um, Marriage Mondays with the Kings on KRG and 98.5 FM The Rock. What I generally ask you all to do or tell you all to do is if you are outside the listening area, to go to our website, marriagemondayswiththekings.com and click on the Listen Here tab. Well, what I did on this morning is I just simply put the link in the description on this morning. Um, for those of you who are on Facebook, for those of you who... Um, are watching via Instagram and YouTube, you would just have to go to our website. So click on the link for those of you who are watching Facebook. Tonight, what we're going to be speaking about is when I cannot trust my spouse. Again, when I cannot trust my spouse. And so the question being this, is it really your spouse that you cannot trust? Or is it something from like your past or a previous relationship or something like that? Is it really your spouse? So join us tonight at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on KRG and 98.5 FM, The Rock, here in Harker Heights, Texas, baby. Central Texas, good morning, sunshine. Good morning, honey. So shout out to all of those who are in the Central Texas, especially those who are serving on Fort Hood, whether you be active duty or civilian, shout out to you. Now, the second announcement that I have is we want you all to join us, okay? Help us in getting the word out. Join us, join us, join us for the October Marriage Mondays with the Kings Couples Challenge, okay? Using the hashtag MMWTKS Challenge. Join us October the 1st through October the 31st. And so what we're going to purpose to do for the month of October is post the challenge every day, okay? This is what we want you to do. Come to the page. Once you've completed that challenge for today, you got to provide some receipts. Because the kings want to be a blessing. We want to sow into a wonderful couple's life. You know what I'm saying? For those of you who are single... Go and check it out. You know, that link that I provided is right down that link. You just click on it. It's a whole PDF form. We ask that you take the assessment first just to kind of see where you are. Be open and honest. You know, only you know as, a, you know, a couple or whatever. And then join us on the challenge. So for those of you who are listening outside the United States, we do apologize. We are not familiar with your areas like Madagascar. I've never been there. I desire to go there, though. Um, some parts of Africa. However, those in the United States, what we're going to do is have a drawing because you got to come back to Marriage Mondays with the Kings and say done. So you can post it on your personal page every day, the challenge of what it is and what you did, um, you and your honey, or you can just follow our page. Either way, use the hashtag MMWTKS challenge. Okay. So we want to be a blessing and so on in. Now, let me put this out here. I am so proud of all the couples. You see what I'm saying? Proud, okay? Y'all out here showing out. Y'all going on dates. Y'all dressing up for each other. There's been so many anniversaries. So if you've had an anniversary recently, congratulations on obtaining and accomplishing another year in the Lord in your marriage, all right? Good morning, cousin. Um. So, and then, and then... Uh, there are singles who are out here finding real love, okay? Come on, me and my husband, we be praying for everybody now, to include the singles. Y'all know we don't leave y'all out. However, on this morning, this is what I want to I wanna talk about. I need y'all to talk to me because, you know, it's, it be all kind of things me and the Lord be discussing, and then it has to hit me really hard, and then I bring it to you all. What happened to the village? Okay, what happened to the village? A lot of you all who grew up somewhat in my era, who's around my age, you understand what I mean when I say the village. What happened? Okay, so for those of you who do not know, let me simply explain. Good morning. All right, now, congratulations. Happy anniversary. So for those of you who do not know what the village is, let me explain. 
The Village is simply an amazing support group that you have in your community um, that you grew up with. You know, you had, whether it be single parents or married individuals, that if it's something that you had to do, you depended on your village, y'all kind of depended on each other. You know, if you were going through things in life, guess what you could do? Talk to someone in your village. You know, that's what I seen growing up. When someone was in need in the community, the village would get together and help out without shame. So I'm confused as to what happened. You know, I'm going to share some of the things that I seen when it come came to the village. Um, things that I've seen and why I can speak on this. Y'all share as well. But help me understand this. I don't get it. And so as I was praying, talking to God, different things like that. And I'm always praying and asking about marriage. There are so many amazing single people out there who really desire to be in a relationship or to be in a marriage. You know what I'm saying? There are so many that are married. I'm just going to be keeping a buck with y'all that are really going through, you know, really going through. But the crazy thing about it, and even the word of God tells us a house uh, divided against itself cannot stand. That's the word of God. A house divided again. So anything that brings division cannot stand because it's been divided. So when, so one of the things that I hear people say is this, because helping to raise each other's children and having positive role models in your village that your children could look up to, you know, if they couldn't talk to mama and daddy, guess what they could do? They could go and talk to the village. You know, what happened to that? Why do we not have that no more? Why is it that everybody want to be secretive and all this kind of stuff? Like, we don't all go through things. And I understand. You can't trust everybody. I got that. You see what I'm saying? But me, for example, having a relationship with God and I'm praying to God and saying, God, this is on my mind or this is on my heart. I've done this several times, especially as a woman, a mother, a wife. We wear so many hats. Not to say that you men do not, but I'm just saying, when you really look at it, let's just keep it honest now. When you really look at it, the glue that holds your family together is nine times out of ten that mother, that wife, that woman, whatever the case may be. You know, especially if it's a good one. Let's just keep it honest. We're not trying to take nothing against you, uh, against you all men. But even if you look back at history, who was it? Who was it? It was my mother. It was grandmother, Medea, whoever the case may be. So what happened? <laughs> like, I don't get it. Y'all got me ready to read the comments. Um... Villages produce productive men and women. I agree with that. You see what I'm saying? I so agree with that. But the thing is, what happened? Why are we not trusting anymore? And see, when we operate from a godly system, we should be able to trust one another. We should be able to read each other's spirit. But it seems like a lot of us, especially in that calls ourselves children of the most high God, we're operating from a selfish we're operating from a divisive. We're operate. We the ones keeping up most of the mess. Why is that? When we call ourselves children of the Most High God, we can set up here on Sundays and we can. I don't know why I'm going here, but I'm going here. We can speak life and we can minister over the pulpit and all the things. Come on now and done it. But then you sit around and you turn around and you talking about the next person like a dog. What happened to our village? You know what I would love to see. Let me just say this: when it comes to village, I would love to see a village of women. A village of women, not just people on social media who you don't know personally. Because one of the things that I seen growing up, one of the things, especially from my church home, St. Luke Baptist Church out of Spencer, Oklahoma, I grew up under the late Pastor D. Witt Rowland Sr., okay? As a child, that's who I grew up under. And when a woman would have a baby, when a woman would have a baby, whether she was married or not, while they are at the hospital, it was the village of women that came in, cleaned the home, they made sure that everything was good, they made sure that it was meals and things like that. They really came in and covered their sister, okay? While you are off having this baby, you come home to a clean home, you come home to meals at least for like a week or a month, month how they used to do it. They had these what they call little trains, why we ain't got that stuff no more? What's going on? Everybody sitting up here in line talking about how you don't need somebody else. We do need each other. Just like the song says, I need you to, su to survive. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Okay? We all a part of his body. So why are we not operating like it? I don't get it. Why are we sitting up here tearing each other down? You had your village. 
When someone graduated, it wasn't just the family that showed up. It was the entire village that showed up and supported. You know what I'm saying? We don't do that no more. Why? I don't get it. Like, I just, I don't get it. Why everybody choose to be bitter, backbiting, and divisive. And that goes strictly against what the word of God says. Why is it that our children no longer have positive examples? Or I ain't going to say no longer. I'm going to say a minimal positive examples to look up to. Why does that no longer exist? Maybe it's turmoil going on in my home as a child growing up. But I could look up to brother and sister so-and-so. And they could be my example. Or the grandparents could be my example. But nobody is at her being examples. The only thing that I see a lot of people doing is at her front like you got it together when we really don't. Out here trying to act like we're perfect ever since social media came about when we really don't. And then the ones who sit up and tell the truth, like me and my husband... Those are the ones that everybody should say, y'all shouldn't say this. Y'all shouldn't talk about that. But how are we supposed, how is iron supposed to sharpen iron if we don't be transparent about the things that we go through? Why is everybody, especially brothers and sisters in Christ, so quick to shut you down and tell you that you shouldn't speak like that? I don't get it. Even Jesus went through when he was on this earth. Have y'all ever really just sat down? You. Now what your pastor said over the pulpit. Now what you heard Bishop Jake say. Now what you heard uh, uh, Joe Osteen say. But have you really just sat down and just read Jesus' journey? That's what God told me to do. And I was just like, woo. And I read that thing in the message. I, woo. Jesus, boys, who's traveling. Same thing we're going through now. You know what I'm saying? But we don't have that village. To come together. And then we set up here and we talk about it and we dog each other. So let me scale it back a little bit. Let me talk about Family 2.0. Because y'all know I talked about that not too long ago. When I did a live. A lot of the villages don't even exist in the family. Okay? I'm talking about blood family. Why? Let me ask the blood family members. Let me go ahead and put it out here and ask y'all. And see, some of y'all, y'all can't say this because your family already treats you like the black sheep. You know what I'm saying? Most of them treat you like the black sheep. So some of y'all can't say this. So y'all just go ahead and share it and I'm going to say it with you. Why is it? Now, I understand when you got family don't want to fool with certain family members because they always keep a mess going. But my question is, how are we grown and we always keep a mess going? What is preventing the family from working together to get things done? And I'm not just talking about coming together when people die, when people pass away. Let me share something with y'all. I'm just going to share my heart because it's been on my heart for about the past two weeks. I know we're not supposed to be envious and jealous, but I'm really envious and jealous. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest, y'all. Can, can I be transparent with y'all this morning? I'm really envious and jealous of all the families that I see that truly get together, no matter what their profession is, they don't try to act like they all busy. Once a year, they have dedicated time to get together. Why is it like pulling teeth? If you're not the planner in the family, okay, I get it. That's not your part. Don't play that part. But why is it that two and three and four family members can't get together and plan something for the family? Why is it that we can't have, I have friends who have family group chats. They have family text groups. They have family Facebook pages and everybody's informed. But see what, what most people want to do when it comes to family is set up and say, well, I didn't go to the graduation because I didn't know nothing about it. Well, what about all them times when your tail was being invited before and you couldn't even say yes or no that I'm not, I'm going or I'm not going. And you don't even have a valid reason for not going, but you will hop your tail on a plane. You'll fly halfway around the United States and you'll go be at somebody else's graduation or somebody that's not even your blood family. Okay. I'm stepping on some toes this morning. Just say, ouch, don't come for me. Just pray for me. Okay. That's what I say. So I don't get it. How is it that you got family that live right on the next street over, but you won't even invite them to stuff? And this is something that I don't understand because this is what I'm learning. The newer generation is not like our generation. Let us not clown them. Let us learn something from them, okay? Old heads, I'm going to call us in the bub, old heads. See, we was taught not to have a voice. The younger generation do have a voice. You see what I'm saying? And the thing is, we was brought up under lies. Let's just be honest. Don't tell on your family, but we was brought up under lies. This younger generation don't want to operate in walking lies, okay? We, the younger generation ain't being forced 
thank you, Lord, to sit up here and call somebody uncle that you know that somebody else's husband that ain't really your blood uncle. They going to sit up here and ask, wait a minute. When Auntie, uh, when Auntie so-and-so, Auntie Lucille and, and, and Uncle John John, when did they get married? Because as far as I know, they're not married. They're going to ask the questions. And see, that's the thing. We couldn't ask the questions. So then what we do as a family is say, oh, they talk too much. They out here ask too many questions. No, they are telling the truth. It is time for families to start walking the truth. That's why so many families is divided, okay? And not that we sitting up here, this group get together and you talk. No. I don't get it. What are we going to do right now? I'm talking to the ones that's my age, between 40, 50, and above. What are we going to do? And who's going to be the example for the younger generation? I done talked about it. You know, in my family, there is only one generation above me. Everybody else done died off. And I done talked to my generation, the family, and I said, guess what? It is up to us. To keep the glue together. It is up to us to do what Papa and Madea and Big Mama and all them did. And keep the glue together. I don't get it. But everybody want to walk around divided and mad and upset. And you always complaining. We are tired of every time we pick up the phone and ask you how you doing. You complaining about something. My question that I always ask people is what are you going to do to change the situation? Because if you're not willing to do something to change the narrative where I can pray with you and walk beside you, then I don't want to hear it. We can make this a three minute phone call. How you doing? Yep, you was on my mind, bro, sis, cousin, auntie, uncle, whatever. Oh, oh, you gonna start complaining right now? I was just calling to see how you was doing. All right, I'll talk to you later. Have a blessed day in the Lord. And I'm hanging up the phone. Because that is draining on your mental, your emotional, and your physical. When every time we call to talk to you to see how you doing, you always complaining. Get your whole life together. Change the narrative. Why is it always negative? Okay, with them family members. Have that conversation. You know what, uncle? Why every time I talk to you, all you do is sit up and complain. You ain't got nothing, nothing positive to talk about. Nothing to be thankful for. God woke you up on this morning. He allowed you to see it another day and you still complaining? Come on, somebody. Who am I talking to on this morning? And then let's talk about the community. It is two words that God has put on my heart for 2023 that I'm purposing to initiate and start right now. Okay? Connection and collaboration. Those are the two things. And I'm praying now, God, who do you want me to collaborate with? Who do you want the kings to collaborate with? Who do you want us to connect with? One of the uh, prayers, God has already answered. Connect with those who's going to pour into you like you're going to pour into them. And I do understand that there are some people that you're pouring is at zero, okay? Because you're always sowing and pouring into everybody else. That's somebody that's worthy of pouring into. That's another reason why we get drained. Because I was there several times. And man, let me tell you, it feels good when people are inboxed. It feels good when people will text me. It feels good when people will call. And even though I got to turn around and call them back and say, you know what? You was on my mind. God put you on my heart this morning. Are you doing okay? Because that's what I do when God puts somebody on my heart. God put people on y'all's heart. And you you can text. You can message on social media in the inbox and all that. But I would suggest doing the most direct way. Pick up the phone and call or send a text message and say, you were on my mind. How were you doing? So check that. But see, this is the thing that I don't get either. When it comes to why the village is no longer together, let's start with the, the church house, okay? I want to start with y'all. Y'all know I always got something, an, an encouraging word. Just swallow it. Just swallow it. If it's for you, take it like that nasty casserole back in the day. If not, just keep it pushing because I'm not crazy. The Lord has put this on my heart for me to talk about. Why are churches no longer getting together and collaborating in their communities? Okay, I'm about to the point, I dang near don't care what a denomination you is. I grew up Baptist, okay? When did Baptist, me and my husband collaborate with Church of God in Christ. I may not understand all of what you do now. Maybe some stuff that I probably... I have a conversation with you, but everything I can't get down with, but I'm not going to, you know, call it out or whatever. But what I'm saying is, do you know how amazing it would be in our communities if we seen the churches get together? And I'm not just talking about the ones that's in the same denomination. You get together and you fellowship. And, and let me add this, because this happened right here in Colleen, Texas. And I wanted to lay some hands on people. 
and not in the name of Jesus because we was promoting it as well. Had a big thing. Let me tell you what happened in Central Texas. Hmm, I'm put it out there. We had a big thing where all the churches in the community was getting together to feed the community. Okay, we was happy. This is something that I had never seen since I was a kid. But whoa, I was going to see this in this big military community. Fort Hood is the biggest military installation in the world or whatever the case may be. And then everybody was collecting in their different churches and you know, they was like, oh, we're going to be over in this location. We're going to pass it out over here. The news media was out. That thing was lovely. You heard me? I was so excited to see my community coming together, the church families come together and everything. And guess what happened? Guess what happened? When the news media came around, one pastor, and if it's you, just repent. Because this right here rebroke our community. One pastor got on and took the credit for what everybody else had did. Central Texas. For those of y'all who remember that, tell these people on here that I ain't lying. Tell these people because I know you've seen it. And I sat up there because I was so excited because I was watching the news and I was like, yes, our city is amazing. And one pastor got on there and took the credit for what the entire community and surrounding areas did. And guess what they did? Because you had to get your shine, pastor. You know who you are. God bless your heart and all your parts. You rebroke our community. And it came to the point because me and my husband at that time had a business called Beauty is My Business Studios that we opened for the community. People did not trust because they thought we was trying to take something from them when God told us to open it. Okay? Anybody who's ever been in Beauty is My Business, go ahead and tell them. I've been there before. God told us to open it to be a blessing to the community and we pay for everything out of our pocket and it ain't like we could really afford to do it but we was being obedient and walking on the obedience of God but people wouldn't even step foot half the time after that happened because we, the kings, was preaching community, community, community. Go out and support your community. This is a big thing to do in the community and then the community was broken. The reason why the village is not working like it used to is because of broken trust. That is the bottom line. When people can learn that they can trust each other, then we can start to build together for the betterment of our community. So I'm charging, I am charging all the leaders in my community. I'm gonna start here because I don't know where y'all listening from, but in Central Texas, that's Waco, that's Colleen, that's Fort Hood, that is Harker Heights, that is Belton, Nolanville, Gerald, Salado, Land Passes, Copperas Cove, uh, Kempna, all of y'all. I'm charging y'all. All the pastors start coming together. Because guess what? In order to get members back in your church, we got to feel like we can trust you. And if you can't even be men and women of God to come together on one accord like the word of God say, for the sake of the people, people ain't coming up in your church building. I'm just going to be real. That's why there has been a great falling away. Woo, God have me. He got me talking on this morning. Okay, let's keep it real. Ain't nobody going to tell you in your church and in your congregation because, you know, I don't want to make past the first lady mad. I don't care. If God told me to say it, I'm going to say it. Who going to whoop me? Okay? Now, so let me put that out there. So good morning. Those of you who are not in churches in the community, let's start collaborating. Start praying now and ask God who he desires you to collaborate with in your community. And I'm not just talking about one or two people. Because, baby, I could tell you right now, do the kings collaborate? We are not hypocrites. We're not going to go out here and tell you to do something that we don't do. Okay? I can name off some businesses right now, the top of my head. Uh, uh, r and &M Designs, they are decor. We have used them. Exquisite and elegant designs and decor. Um, Michael Anthony's photography. You know what I'm saying? A uh, uh, Cajun skillet. They now got a business located down in the Round Rock, Georgetown. I think it's Cedar Park area or whatever. That that is some good good New Orleans home grade food. You know what I'm saying? We actually we was just in the city of Belton. For some of y'all who seen the old cars that we was showing, we get out in these streets and get out in our community and not for clout, but to meet new people. To, to get to know new people. You see what I'm saying? To, to, uh, support our local businesses. A lot of us are not doing that. 
We're not. We are so quick to go on social media and dog our local business. Oh, I went to go visit here and this was horrible. And I'm giving them one star and my food. And this was, did you go and ask to speak to the manager before you blasted them on social media? Did you do that? Oh, you didn't? Oh, that's what grown folks do. That's what you do when you build a village. Okay? I am so sick and tired of the division. I'm telling you. I'm ready to build. This is Chantrell King talking. Okay? I'm ready to build with individuals who are ready to build. If it's, woe is me. I can't trust people. Well, there's plenty of people I couldn't trust in my family, outside of my family, in my community, outside my community, in the church house, outside of the church house. But I'm still going. Okay? Because when I get to them pearly gates, I want to be welcomed in by God. I want God to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Not just because you stay within the church walls, because the word of God says, go out and make fishes of men. How can we do that if we're not being examples out in the street? Come on, somebody. You you preaching over the pulpit on Sunday, but you cussing your co-workers out Monday through Friday. Oh, who am I talking to on this morning? What happened to the village? For the sake of our future generation, it's time for us to get back to the village. So for those of you, wow, that's why I don't go to church. I don't be in the church house. Well, guess what? Go to your city community calendar. Go on social media. Search it out. We don't have to go all the way to Virginia to attend something to be out in the community. You know what I'm saying? We ain't got to go all the way over here. No. Start at home. How can we build it if we're not doing the work? And when you do the work, go ahead. Take a picture. Out here in these streets, what what is the little catchphrase people say? Oh, I'm outside. We outside. That's what everybody saying. We outside. That's what everybody. Well, get outside in your community. How about that? It's ninety some degrees here in Texas. I'm sitting up here sweating like a runaway slave right now with all this humidity, and it's supposed to be almost ninety eight, ninety nine today where I'm at. But guess what? I be outside in my community, okay? Can't nobody ever say that the kings is hypocrites because we do what we say and we say what we mean. So y'all have a blessed week. Join us tonight for Marriage Mondays with the Kings as we are going to be talking about when I cannot trust my spouse. The question is, is it your spouse that you really can't trust or is it something from your past? Is it a past? Look, like the memes we doing. Is it a past relationship? So if you're in the local area, Central Texas, all them cities I just named, join us. KRG and 98.5 FM The Rock, they are based out of Hark Heights, Texas, okay? And we're going to have some things that's going to be changing. Do you know the King's going to be doing or whatever? Join us for our October challenge, our couples challenge. Go to the, click on the link. Not even go to the website. Click on the link in the, the um, description. Um, if you're on Facebook, if you are on YouTube or Instagram and some of our other platforms, then go to our website, marriagemondayswithkings.com and click on the Listen Here tab. Listen, y'all have a blessed week on purpose. I want to know, what are you all going to do to help make a stronger village, okay? Who are you going to go and meet today without wanting something from them, but just to meet them and say, hi, my name is such and such. It's nice to meet you. What are we going to do to help change this for the sake of our generations? Because these babies is already in the social media. They don't even go outside and play anymore. They be on the games. I got two of them, okay? They be on the games. They don't be riding bicycles and all that kind of stuff like that. So bring them away and take them out in the community when, when y'all go. Uh, It's going to be an event coming up right in Colleen, Texas. Culture on the Square. I'm going to get the date. I'm going to tell y'all about it. It's going to be October, I want to say October 13th, 15th, whatever that Saturday is. I think October the 15th, downtown Colleen. Come on, those in Central Texas. I want to see y'all outside. Okay? Hashtag outside. But y'all have a blessed week. Don't let anybody steal your joy. Be a blessing this week and not a curse. Don't have a nasty attitude because don't nobody want to deal with your nasty attitude. I'm here to tell you. Join us tonight. 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on KRG 90.5 FM The Rock. And your girl Shannon will be back with you next Monday with whatever it is that God placed in my heart. So God bless you and blessings to you.